overwhelming power, overpowered by greedy men, willing to kill for their ivory. We've been shot at. We are now in war. What's at stake is the future of Gabon. If we don't beat the poachers, Gabon will go the way of CAR. We will lose our country. In this tiny Central African nation, park rangers called Eco Guards man the front lines. And the U.S. military has answered their call for help. We not only help them preserve the wildlife, but at the same time we're disrupting criminal organizations and we're helping them develop a better future. There's a hill here, maybe. Donk. And then this is coming up. So what Donk. does that mean for the objective? Donk. VOA is the first news media outlet to embed with the U.S. military on a counter-poaching mission. We followed a small army team to see how American training and resources are strengthening the Rangers. In some of the parks, they already are a, a true paramilitary force. They're having gun battles about once a month. This is the fight for Gabon's forest. I eat everything that gorillas eat. What's it taste like? This tastes like, um, it's like, it's like cucumber, I guess. For biologist Lee White, the nation's minister of forest, Gabon yes, is a paradise. Yes, uh, when you see elephants walking out onto the beach in Luango, and then, then you see a humpback whale breaching in the background, then you think to yourself, is this real? Yeah. But that's Gabon, that's what Gabon is like. Gabon is home to more forest elephants than anywhere else in the world. But over the past couple of decades, they've been killed by poachers by the tens of thousands. Tragically, we've lost about 70% of the forest elephants of Central Africa in the last 15 years. But between Gabon and Northern Congo, we're the only places that are really hanging on. Gabon's vast rainforest cover almost the entire country, making it a perfect home for the African forest elephant. Unlike their cousins that thrive in the savannas of Eastern and Southern Africa, forest elephants of West and Central Africa are smaller, with straight tusks rather than curved ones to better maneuver in dense trees and underbrush. Female forest elephants do not start breeding until they are more than 20 years old, leading wildlife experts to estimate that it takes more than 50 years for the species to double their population. According to the World Wildlife Fund, poachers kill at least 20,000 African elephants each year for their tusk, despite a ban on international ivory trade. Forest elephants have been hit the worst. The World Wildlife Fund's biomonitoring report indicates there are now less than 10,000 forest elephants in Central Africa. DRC, CAR, and Cameroon have all lost more than 90% of their forest elephant populations since 2011. Gabon and Congo now hold Africa's largest forest elephant populations. Gabon's elephant population is down about a third, a blow that's been lessened due to increased resources for conservation. I had about 100 staff, I had no cars. So managing 13 national parks in a country the size of the UK with no cars is quite a struggle. It's a hitchhike to get to the parks. And we went from a budget of um, about $500,000 a year to $25 million. Since 2007, Gabon's national parks have grown from about 100 eco-guards on the payroll Allez. to more than 850. We have the duty to preserve this ecosystem, this nature, this biodiversity for the generations future, like our predecessors, our ancient parents. Celui-là, 
Ah, il n'est pas bébé. Si j'entends, il y a les éléphants devant, il y a les courries, il y a, on a, il y a un piton ici, je n'ai aucun problème. Mais si j'entends qu'il y a les voix des humains à 15 km, où je vois des coupes de machettes fraîches, très loin, là, je suis réellement en danger. Yeah, that, the, the level of violence has been rising the last five years or so. Until about five years ago, we'd never had anybody shot at. Now it's commonplace. We had some illegal gold miners who were also doing poaching, tried to kill our technical director, Huber Hilary Koga, a couple of months ago. He went into a camp and they immediately opened fire on him. You know, it's a war. I am talking about band of 20 to 50 people in the forest with AK-47, 4-5-8 rifle, 3-7-5 rifle, so it's complicated in the forest. Minkebe National Park is considered the most dangerous post for eco-guards. Bordered by Congo to the east and Cameroon to the north, poachers flood the park and escape capture by darting across the river to another country. Narcisse Baba Obame is the patrol chief there. Avant de partir en patrouille, on a toujours peur parce que, comme je vous dis au parc de Mikébé, quand vous rentrez, vous savez pas si vous allez sortir. Chez nous là-bas, Mikébé, vous pouvez vous croiser directement avec les braconniers. C'est pas, ça veut dire on a un indice, on dit il y a des braconniers à tel endroit et puis arriver. Vous pouvez marcher, vous êtes sur une piste et vous croisez le braconnier et directement le feu est rentré. Ça arrive. Donc, pour vous dire franchement, je suis un être humain. Quand je rentre en mission, je suis toujours stressé. Mais comme c'est mon boulot et j'aime mon boulot. Je suis obligé de bien le faire. Today, even some of the safest parks are under attack. The Cameroonian poachers are now at the north of Lopé, so at uh, 40 km from here, and uh, at the north of uh, even the national parks. They are crossed, uh, they are, they are crossed in Quebec. They are around Minzik. Minzik is at uh, less than 100 km from here. So this is why all the elephants are coming, going to the, to the coast, because they are afraid by these poachers. As a new day in Lope begins, this cadence brings hope, because these eco-guards are training to be the leaders of the counter-poaching fight. And they're not alone. Could somebody brief your medical plan? A group of U.S. soldiers are here to increase their chances of survival. So generally the route we're going to take to do this patrol is leaving the Sedam, head to the main road, and then head south across this bridge. Today, the Americans have created an exercise to hunt down and capture a group of men posing as poachers inside the park. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> Army Captain Kevin Chapla leads the team. But if an injury does happen in real life, all the training stops. So I would just advise you guys to watch where you're stepping. There, we've seen like giant snakes down there. So if you get bit by something, just bring it to our attention and we'll we'll proceed accordingly. Uh, so right now our, our training patrol has, they're about 200 meters from the objective, the suspected camp of about four poachers. Uh, and from here, they're probably gonna send out a recon element, see what they can see, come back, develop a plan, and then, uh, and then raid the, the suspected poaching camp. U.S.-led counter-poaching training operations like this one began in Tanzania in 2009, officials say, and U.S. military efforts started in Gabon in 2018. Our core mission really is to build the capability of our African partners through training. So anything that is criminal in nature has the capability to have linkages with violent extremist organizations and impact uh, the, the ability of the, the government to get the critical programs and development to the people uh, wherever they may be at. Months of training has improved techniques to capture poachers and preserve evidence. J'enlève les chaussures pour essayer de vérifier s'il n'y a pas de papiers cachés ou des informations qui peuvent nous mener à bien notre mission. And first aid training is in high demand as poachers push deeper into Gabonese land. 
Here at Lope National Park, it takes about four hours to drive to the nearest hospital. It takes even longer from some of the other parks. So for these eco guards, this medical training could be the difference between life and death. Army Specialist Omar Soto is the team's medic. Out of the past 15 months, I think I've been here 11. My goal was to basically teach them how to identify injuries that are basically can, could potentially take your life the, the quickest. Give them the, the tools to basically, or the knowledge to address um, the injuries accordingly. Unlike previous counter poaching training from other nations, Chapla says the U.S. mission with Gabon's National Park Agency, known as the ANPN, is designed to train future trainers. This small group will return to parks across Gabon, and their immediate job will be teaching their colleagues everything they've learned from the American team. It's a proof of concept for them being able to instruct their own. And in fact, it's the first uh, training sustainment capability that the ANPN has, has ever had, so it's, it's pretty big. Je crois qu'il y a un grand monsieur de ce monde qui a dit qu'il est mieux d'apprendre à quelqu'un à pêcher que de lui donner du poisson. Nous aurons toujours besoin de la coopération, mais nous pensons que pour ça, euh, il est toujours, il est bon que nous ayons, nous soyons plus ou moins autonomes. These eco guards are highly motivated individuals, and teaching them is it, not only is it fun, but it's easy. They're very uh, willing to learn and willing to ask questions. And as an instructor, I don't think uh, it gets any better than that. It's a very rich information because when we entered here, we had different attitudes than today. We are becoming a little more professional. And they need to be professional to have a fighting chance against the organized crime networks and terror groups they're facing. We can trace the poachers who are killing those elephants back to Boko Haram. The group has terrorized Nigeria and parts of West Africa, raiding villages, kidnapping hundreds of schoolgirls, and killing thousands of people as its leaders seek to create an Islamic caliphate. As I said to the U.S. Embassy a few months ago, I say, boss, we have two solutions. We work together or we work uh, you know, on each side. But at the end, the, the attentat will be in your country, not in mine. But I, I agree they will come in my country to take ivory or money and to, to prepare this attentat. So we will have to work together. One thing not included in this mission, weapons training, something the Rangers say they desperately want. That's because until last year, the government didn't allow eco guards to carry weapons. And most still have to rely on military gendarmes to patrol with them for their defense, role played in the training by eco guards carrying sticks. It's got to the point where, not in all parks, but in some parks, we have to arm the echo guards as well as the gendarmes. And I have initiated that. The president supports it, and, and we are in the process of, 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 of buying, buying the guns. Ça, c'est ce qu'on a retrouvé sur les braconniers, sur celui-là. C'est pas si le chef des braconniers ou pas, mais il a beaucoup de munitions. Now you, you, you can't say to a poacher, oh, sorry, guys, uh, stay quiet and give me your gun. Three, three months ago, we were not allowed to carry weapons. Now we have weapons. And the poaching is decreasing. Officials hope these changes, along with additional international training and support, will accelerate Gabon's counter-poaching offensive. But time is running out for the elephants. And it may not be enough. We're losing about two tons of ivory a month. That's about 150 elephants a month. So I'm proud that we've made the progress that we've made, but it's still catastrophic, so we still have to do more. You may win some battles, but, but the war keeps going.